Oh, hello everyone and welcome to this webinar. I'm Francis Seeley from Mental Voices and Global Net 21 and today we're going to do a second interview of someone we've already done previously and that's James Cracknell. James is um, someone who I think has very courageously um, set upon a venture which um, most people wouldn't dream of because it's a huge thing to do. He started a community newspaper and when he did that um, before he did that, rather, we actually interviewed him about what his intentions are, what his ambitions were, how he was going to produce, how he was going to distribute, and, and Keith Davis did that, and it was a really, really good, interesting interview. Now, he has produced several editions, so he now can look back on, you know, what he wanted to do, whether that's been achieved, how further he wants to go, and some of the problems that are associated with both production and distribution. And also about talking about community newspapers and social networks generally, which may be the way of the future in this part of the 21st century. So James, thank you for joining us. And maybe just to remind everyone, perhaps you could first of all tell us a bit about your background and why you decided to set, set up Enfield Dispatch in the first place. Uh, yeah, so um, my background is obviously in journalism. Um, I've been a reporter for 12 years um, at various local newspapers, um, both uh, in London, outside London, um, and about uh, four or five years ago, um, I got involved with a, a social enterprise in East London, which wanted to launch a newspaper in, in Waltham Forest, the London Borough of Waltham Forest, um, because they felt that the the, the sort of corporate-owned local media wasn't doing a, a great job and was obviously in decline for various reasons so they wanted to sort of come up with a solution and see if they could um, launch a newspaper there which would um, do a better job and be more sustainable in the long term so they did that at the time I was living in Walthamstow so I got involved with that at the time um, that's Waltham Forest Echo and I ended up becoming the editor of that paper and I would say we've sort of been moderately successful with that obviously it's still in existence five years later um, uh, but I also moved to Enfield a couple of years ago, and um, so, soon after I moved to Enfield, there's a paper called the Enfield Advertiser, which closed, um, and that was you know a big loss for the community. Um, coincidentally, it was a newspaper that I'd actually freelanced for in the past, so I sort of knew knew what that paper was about. I knew some of the people who had been made redundant, um, so that was a big loss. And then when that happened. Um, I said to my boss, David Floyd, who's the director of Social Spider, which is the publisher, um, I said to him, you know, if you want to expand, if you think that you, you want to launch more newspapers in the future, you should do it in Enfield. Um, that should be, you know, this is a huge London borough, 300,000 people that um, is not being served properly by the local media now after Enfield advertisers was closed. Um, so we... We sort of said, yeah, let's try and make this happen. But obviously it's not an easy thing to make it happen. And, um, you know, I sort of set about sort of trying to make a few connections in the community, meeting people. Um, there was an Enfield Literary Festival that I went to to talk about local newspapers and local media. Um, I ended up meeting Emma Rigby from Love Your Door, Steph. And sort of one thing led to another like, good opportunity there to do it and um, it was around this time last year that we decided that we were going to go for it launch a newspaper in Enfield um, and that I would be the editor of, of that um, and then we launched in uh, October 2018 with our first edition and now we're on the 10th edition. Okay I mean you you also said I think in your original interview is that you sort of got the idea by looking at Enfield Voices um, is that still your view? Yes, uh, yeah, um, yeah. No, I did go on Enfield Voices, and um, I think I, I think I did a post uh, on Enfield Voices probably around May 2018, and I sort of was just like, "How do people feel? Do, you know, do you feel like you need a local newspaper? Is this something that could be, you know, something that would be popular?" And you know, but I think I got quite a good response from that at the time. So yeah, there was yeah, there was a few things like that that I did sort of just to gauge interest, but um, that was yeah, that was a useful way. I mean, that, that uh, sort of link that you get between newspapers and social networks, um, 
I mean, do you think that's a sort of important link? I mean, do you think community newspapers of the kind that you uh, have developed and published and social networking, which is an on the increase, and there are a lot of them in Enfield now, that is sort of the way forward in the 21st century and the sort of synergy between them is important. I mean, you mentioned Enfield Voices, you mentioned Love Your Doorstep, and clearly you do work with social networks. Yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think I think you know you, you have to recognise that um, the media landscape has changed. Um, you know, there was a time when newspapers were sort of the be all and end all. Newspapers did everything, um, and that was the forum where people, you know, people did everything. They found out information, but they that was also, um, you know, they they would interact with newspapers a lot more than they do now. Um, and we've got to recognise that that's moved on and now people are online and people have their conversations on social media. People interact with each other that way. And there are these, these, these sort of vast social networks that have established, such as Enfield Voices, um, which, you know, these are, these are very strong online communities. And you, I think you have to recognise that you have to, um, <clears throat> you have to work with them. And I think, um, you know what's what's good about what we're doing with Enfield Dispatch is that we we like to sort of form these relationships with with organisations like Enfield Voices and Love Your Doorstep, and um, we recognise that we you know we're we're not trying to sort of compete with these 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 networks that already exist. Um, we're not trying to you know um, put other people out of business or anything. We we we, we recognise that we have to collaborate. We have to work together and. You know, I think it's brilliant that you, you know, you want to interview me and um, and that sort of thing. And and you, you, when the newspaper comes out at the beginning of the month, you guys sort of put it on your page. And you know, there are other groups on Facebook that do that as well. And there's, um, you know, there's there's other websites like Palmer's Green Community that do a similar thing. And we're basically we're all helping each other. We all, you know, in you know, uh, on on our website, we'll link in our articles. We provide links to other sources, and we're not afraid to link to sort of outside sources. And similarly, um, you know, these these websites will link back to us and say that this was a report in Enfield Dispatch. And you know, I think that's that's the way forward. We've got to work together. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I, I've never felt in Enfield Voices that I'm in competition with anyone. I always think I'm in, as you said, collaboration. And working together is much better because you get a, a better total um, view of what's going on in the area by doing that. And I think if you compete, it just destroys that. And that, that's a shame. <laughs> OK, so you, you now printed your first issue. Um, and you've had several since then. Now, you know, looking back, has it gone as you expected? Or have there been any surprises? <laughs> um, I don't. I don't know what my expectations were. Um, I mean, because because we have the fortunate thing was this wasn't the first newspaper that we had launched. This well, Enfield Dispatch is actually the, the third newspaper that we've launched because uh, we've also got one in Tottenham. So I think when we launched. Enfield Dispatch. We were in a, we were in a very strong position in terms of we already had the sort of expertise within our organisation that we knew exactly what we needed to do. We weren't, you know, I think there are there are lots of other newspapers being launched all the time now, um, community newspapers or hyperlocal newspapers, um, and there are a lot of people who are sort of taking it upon themselves. Oh, you know, we need to sort of launch a newspaper. Our town doesn't have a newspaper. Um, and you know it's very, very brave when people do that when they've not done it before and I think the first time you do it is incredibly daunting when we launched Wolf and Forest Echo that was a bit of a sort of a punt you know um, a shot in the dark you sort of don't know what's gonna how, how it's gonna result but I think the fortunate thing was with Enfield Dispatch was that we were quite confident and um, we sort of felt okay we know what we're doing we know what needs to be done we know the connections we need to make. We, we, we've already got a sort of printing contract. Um, we've, we already know a distribution company. Um, and um, there was already myself who was in the organization um, who was sort of confident at sort of being able to edit a newspaper. So we were sort of, we were sort of confident that we would be able to produce a good newspaper. What, you know, what our strength is we, 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 we feel like we, this sort of community newspaper sort of model that we've created, um, we think is a successful one. 
the challenge um, is uh, making it financially sustainable. Um, so that that's that's the big question mark. Um, like I say, we, we well, let, let's let's come to that. I'll ask you some <laughs> yeah. questions about that and um, give you give you a chance to plug for help on that because I know yeah, it's yeah. important for you. Um, but you know, I mean, for a lot of people, they would find it amazing if you said to them, "Start a local newspaper." You were lucky. Um, or, or you were, you know, just happened to be there in the right place with the right organisation when you wanted to start Enfield Dispatch. But, I mean, you know, how did you start the Enfield one? I mean, how did you get everything together? How did you get the stories together? How did you get the distribution network together? I mean, those are two major different planks of what is an awesome task. Yeah, well, you just have to break it down. So, um I started working on Enfield Dispatch in the middle of August 2018, knowing that we were going to launch um, at the beginning of October. So I basically had a month and a half to get everything ready. But I knew I knew exactly what needed to be done. So I just made a to-do list. And, um, you know, it was quite a long to-do list. Uh, and it is quite daunting when you first put it up there. But, um, uh, it, yeah, I mean, you... When, 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 when you're launching a newspaper, you know, it's, it's very difficult to sort of ring people up and go, oh, we, you know, we're launching a newspaper, do you want to, do you want to get involved? And that's, that's a very difficult thing to sort of get across to someone, the concept that you're actually launching a newspaper. So, and, and, and for me, from a, being a journalist, when you're sort of ringing people up to sort of, or emailing people to, you know, source um, articles, um, you know, you're having to explain, oh, I'm from a newspaper that hasn't even launched yet, but I want, you know, um, do you want to contribute an article, help me with an article? That's, it's quite a, it's quite a difficult thing. Um, but you sort of get into a rhythm of it and, 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 and a lot of people are, you know, excited and they're like, oh, wow, that sounds incredible, you know. And, and we, there was a lot of enthusiasm. Um, I think another benefit of, of Enfield was that, um, it's it's an area that has sort of has an identity has quite a quite a, a strong community um already and um i think they were sort of they were sort of chomping at the bit to have this this community newspaper and i think that i think people in enfield embraced it um in a very positive way so that sort of made my job easier um things like things like distribution um we we, we already had um a distribution company that we were using in in waltham forest and tottenham um, so to begin with, in Enfield, um, we you know we simply extended our, our distribution network into, en into Enfield. Although it has since changed, um, and we've since gone with a different company um, called Door to Door, um, and we've also launched uh, some newsstands around Enfield to make the newspaper sort of uh, have a more sort of permanent location that people can always get it sort of twenty four seven um, outside three different. Um, uh, tube stations and Enfield, um, and as I said, like you know, with with printing, we already had the printing contract, so it was just a case of just adding an Enfield dispatch to that. Um, and you know, in terms of the journalism, um, you know, I, I know what I'm doing in terms of journalism. I know how to source stories, but it's just explaining to people that you're from a newspaper um, that's brand new. Um, can be difficult, but yeah, like I said, I think people embraced it to begin with. But, um, you know, you only had a, a month and a half to set it up, he said, and that's not much time. So did you depend a lot on social networks like Love Your Door, Stair Pen for Voices, all the others, to source some of your stories? Yeah, so um, I, um, you know, I'm quite, I'm quite an organised person, so I sort of, um, you know, we, we put together like a spreadsheet of sort of um, organisations that we thought might be helpful community organizations um um hyper local websites and that sort of thing and we just you know we sort of bombarded people with emails to tell them about the newspaper we, we did put out a press release and that sort of thing and we, we got a lot of publicity before we'd even launched um we were in press gazette um hold the front page um and then obviously local local sites um such as enfield voices and um N21 online and, and these other ones that exist around Enfield. So we were able to get the word out um, through that. Um, and that was that was definitely invaluable. Um, 
because um, you don't you don't want to launch a newspaper without really anyone knowing it, 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 it exists so you want to get that word out there beforehand and I think we built up quite a sort of sense of anticipation for the first edition which which was um, yeah quite successful and I mean how much do you depend on full-time staff and how much do you depend on volunteers um, <clears throat> so so people so I think people are um, quite surprised when they find out how small our team is um, but this this is the model that we have the model that we have is sort of the most low cost model that you could possibly have for producing a newspaper but what you have to bear in mind is that because we're monthly we're, we're only doing it once a month um, so in terms of our staff it's me who does the editorial um, we have a designer um, who's also designing our other newspapers so he's only spending a third of his time on Enfield um, then uh well only recently have we have we hired an advertising salesperson um because previous to hiring um her, na her name's claudia kiss we've just hired her um be before hiring her we had um we were selling adverts on commission so we didn't even have our own salesperson prior to that um and we have um we you know we have a couple of other people in our office who work for social spider the publisher um but you know, they're, they're not really focused on Enfield. I'm, I'm the one who's focused on Enfield, you know, um, um, most of the time. Um, and then, so the rest, the rest of the newspaper, you know, anyone who's read Enfield Dispatch will, will see that the articles are written by um, people in the community who are essentially the volu voluntary contributors is how we describe them. But they're, they're people who, it's sort of um, a win-win relationship because Obviously, we, we need articles to fill the paper and we, we like to have a sort of a wide range of articles and cover a wide range of topics. Um, but then there, there, there are people, you know, running, um, for example, let's say like a, a local choir and they're crying out for a bit of publicity. Or they've got a show coming up. Um, so they, they're, they're, they're writing an article from their perspective and they're saying, you know, I run a local choir and this is why I do it. And, you know, we'd love people to get involved. And um, so that they're sort of, they're, they're writing it and they're, they're getting something out of it and we're getting something out of it. And that's, you know, we have every newspaper is, is a series of those sorts of um, relationships where you've got, you know, charities and community groups and arts organizations that are writing about, what they're doing in Enfield, they're getting something out of it and we're getting something out of it. And that's, that's the sort of model that we have. And it, you know, I think it works pretty well, but then on top of that, obviously we like to have the journalism, you know, we want to be a proper newspaper that, that, that sort of is um, breaking news stories and is investigating things. Um, and I do a lot of that, but then we, there's also some free freelance journalists that we've built relationships with as well. So it's, it's, it's always, um, you know, collaborative effort. But, you know, even though you've got a minimal staff, you still need income. So how are you funded and how do you raise your money and what help do you ask of people to get that money in? Yeah, OK, so let's talk about money. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so so we, we, we are operating the sort of lowest cost newspaper that you could possibly have. But that said, you know, we, yeah, we, we do we do need to, to raise um a substantial bit of bit of money. New, producing a newspaper is not a cheap thing. It's a, it's a lot. It's, you know, it'd be a lot cheaper and easier to just have Enfield Dispatch as a website and not not bother with the print print newspaper. But you know, the the, the reason we want to make it a print newspaper is because we believe that print newspapers are still important. Um, that they can reach um, areas of the community that that online newspapers um, can't reach. Um, um, so we're committed to that. But the, the, the challenge is to, to we've, we've, we've essentially got to win an argument that was lost 10 or 15 years ago. Um, 10 or 15 years ago is, is sort of around the time when social media started to become dominant and, you know, uh, news, local newspapers um, lost ad, you know, so much advertising around that time and, and still are. Um, because people lost faith in local newspapers, essentially um, businesses abandoned newspapers, you know, where they've been advertising in newspapers for decades and even hundreds of years. Those local businesses um, decided the future was online, the future was social media, and that's where they now spend their advertising money. So how, so how actually are you funded? <laughs> 
Well, okay. Well, well, we are we are funded we are funded through advertising, and we and um, but you know the, the the point that I'm trying to make is just that we've got to we've got to win back those advertisers. We've got to make that argument again. We've got to prove to people that newspapers still have a future. And um, so when 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 we approach advertisers it's it's not easy it's it's not a case of just just going oh yeah you know do you want to advertise in the newspaper yeah sure no we have to we have to prove to people we have to make the argument no um you at the moment you're spending your advertising budget on social media here's why you should actually spend some of your advertising budget in in local newspapers here's why this is this is still a viable platform for, for your business to advertise um so that's why it's difficult and we haven't at the moment we're not selling enough advertising to be you know i can, I can be honest about it we're, we're not breaking even we need to sell a lot more advertising than what we currently are that's why we've just hired a, an advertising salesperson to do that and she's um started going to she started going to sort of networking events and meetings and she's she's trying to build those relationships um but it's a very difficult task to sort of meet these people and and often they're very enthusiastic and you'll meet you'll meet someone and they'll be like oh yeah great i've seen enfield dispatch um what a great thing that you're doing and then we're like okay great do you want to advertise with us oh no sorry um so <laughs> so it, it's difficult and it has been a challenge and i'd be lying if i said that we'd we'd cracked this because i mean enthusiasm is cheaper <laughs> i agree with that yeah but you you also have subscriptions, don't you? I mean, people can be individual subscribers, members, or whatever you call them. Yes, yes, um, yes. Yeah, so, so, so there are two, there are two main sources of income. So, in addition to advertising, we've got a membership scheme, um, which uh, if you, if you ever pick up a copy of the newspaper, if you go to the back page, um, which is like this, uh, the back page describes our membership scheme. Uh, describe sort of the benefits that you get one of the main benefits is you get um, it well if you sign up there, there are different levels you can sign up three pounds a month five pounds a month if you sign up for five pounds a month you can get the newspaper um, actually delivered to your door which is obviously a key benefit um, and you get your name in the paper and, and uh, we've got uh, we've got tote bags and that sort of thing and pin badges so um, you know I, 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 I think People are signing up as members because they uh, they value the, they value what Enfield Dispatch does, and they recognise that it's um, not an easy thing to sort of keep a newspaper alive. Um, so they're supporting us, but they they are getting something back from it as well. Um, but if you if, if, if you sort of I mean the subscription sounds great, but I sh I'm sure that wouldn't finance you. But if you depend on advertising or corporate funding or local authority funding or whatever would that not sort of compromise your independence no <laughs> <laughs> that was a simple answer. why why would not i mean for example you did a story uh, in the latest uh, dispatch on um, on the leader of the council and um in that you you know you talked about her um, not apologising for the accusations made against her. Now, if you do stories like that and you were to get local authority funding, it could be compromised. If you were to do a story on deinvestment and, and companies that were, you know, in, in the fossil fuel industry or whatever, and they were paying you, they might stop. I mean, that's a bad example, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Okay. So, so I mean, that's... That's something that every every newspaper, you know, that's not unique to Enfield Dispatch. And you 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 draw a very clear line between advertising and editorial. I never allow myself to be influenced by advertising. No no self-respecting journalist would, or editor would. Um, and that 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 line is kind of like a sacred line in newspapers. And you're you know every newspaper the advertising and the editorial is, is kept separate. There's, 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 there's never any question of, um, of that compromise um, occurring. Um, but, the, but the advertisers might be influenced by what you print. Well, that's, that's up to them. That's up to, you know, if the advertisers decide that we're printing stories they don't like, that's up to, that's a decision they can make. That's up to them. I'm not going to be influenced by that. Um, you know, well, that, 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 that's it. If I did. Yeah. 
that's important to know and I think that's what makes you independent and that's great but because you're a local paper and there are not many now that prevent that print the sort of range of news that you do I mean have you had any pressure from anyone to print something they want for example as the local authority try to get you to do what they want or anyone else um, well, yeah, I mean, obviously they, 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 they can ask the question. They, if, if, if an advertiser can say, oh, yeah, we'll buy an advert. And also, can you write a story about us? That, you know, we, we get those, those questions get asked because, you know, why not? You know, they would ask those questions. Fair enough. And our response is, well, no, if, 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 we, if, we, if we make a decision about an article, it will be irrespective of whether, whether there's advertising um, attached to it there's there, there's no question of that happening um, we it, it you know it might be that we do end up doing an article but if we do it's because the article has merit um, so yeah there's no question of that in, ter in terms of the in terms of the council um, we we have we have a positive relationship with Enfield Council um, Enfield Council have, have advertised I think in, in every single edition that we've had um, and you know, I, th I, th I think th I think there's a recognition that newspapers have a job to do, which is to hold the council to account. Uh, newspapers are a part of local democracy as much as anything else. They 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 provide information for residents, for voters. Um, they they fulfil that scrutiny function, hold, holding power to account. Um, so we're, we're an integral part of local democracy, and 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 I think. And any any decent council would recognise that, and Enfield Council does recognise that. They recognise that newspapers are essential, and without newspapers, um, you know what what would happen to local democracy without newspapers? And it's very much in the in Enfield Council's interests to have a strong local democracy. You know, they they don't want a weak local democracy as much as anyone else would, um, and that you know that they. They, they, we've had, we've had positive, positive meetings with them. They advertise with us, and it, you know, it's, it's been fine. Um, that there are other councils that we work with, um, for example, Wolf and Forest, uh, where we don't have a good relationship with them, um, and that's because they don't recognise the value of newspapers. But in, in Enfield, uh, they do, and we've had a positive relationship. Yeah, well, I agree. I think newspapers like your social networks are important in terms of local democracy, gauging people and holding authorities of whatever level to account. So, you know, you were saying you, you source your stories by looking at local groups and uh, events that happen locally and what people are doing to make a difference. Um, I mean, how would people get in touch with you if they had a story? What would they do? Uh, email me. Enfield Dispatch at socialspider.com. Um, pe people try to get in touch with me through other ways, but I, I, my default is email. You know, pe people message me on Facebook, but I've got I've got an automatic reply on Facebook that just says, "Please send me an email." Um, so that that's the first point of contact, and um, you know, I'm, I'm, I much prefer to do things that way. Um, and sometimes it takes me a while to get back to people, so you might wait for a reply, but that's just because I, I, if, I, if I'm close to the deadline for the newspaper, then um, I don't have as much time to reply to emails. And I do get a lot of emails. I get, um, you know, tw 20, 30 emails a day, so um, that are just, um, you know, stuff to do with Enfield. So, um, but, you know, I, 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 I do always like to get back to people. I am quite, um, you know, I... You know, I I appreciate whenever someone makes an effort to get in touch with a newspaper, you know, that that's quite a big thing. So um, I'm always grateful when people do that. OK, so when you get people writing in, I mean, you can't print everything. How do you make decisions about what stories are good for that edition? Um, there are very... There are very few times when I say no to people, actually, <laughs> um, because... You know, if, if, if you're making the effort to write to the local newspaper and you're you're sort of raising an issue and whether it's whether it's because it's sort of an issue that you think should be um, sort of investigated as a as a sort of a news article or whether it's because, um, you know, a lot. I think probably most of the emails I get are actually people who just want sort of help with promotion for their either their project or their organization. They're looking for promotion for that for themselves. Um, but that's fine. That is that is what we're here for. Um, 
um, you know, I, I will say no to people if it's, um, you know, if it's a big company, you know, um, you know, I don't know if McDonald's tell me that they, they've got a great story then um, to help promote their, their new burger, then, you know, I'm going to say no to that. <laughs> but um, you know, most of the time it's, you know, it's, it's going to be people in the community who are doing something positive and they want a bit of publicity. Um, and I'm very unlikely to say no to that. Um, but my, my response is normally, okay, great. You know, you're doing something, you're launching a, a project. Um, would you like to write about it? And, I, and some, sometimes that catches people by surprise because, um, the, you know, the old relationship, you know, that people had with their local newspaper was that they would simply tell the newspaper about something and then they put their feet up and then a week later the story would appear in the newspaper. That's not the way, unfortunately, it operates now while with us in any way. The way that we work is you email us, you tell us about what's going on and then, you know, quite often we'll, I'll email back and I'll say, okay, great. Can you write something for us? Um, can you provide us with some images? So we are, we are reliant on people being able to do that themselves. Okay, so we sort of come close to the end of this interview now. So finally, let me ask you that, um, how do you see yourself in the future? Do you think you're viable in the long run? And what message would you give to people out there to help and support you? Um, so we, 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 are, we, are we are in the middle of sort of um, a sort of a battle where we're trying to prove to people that print media still has a future. Um, and you know, it'd be it would be wrong of me to say that we've won that. You know, we've, we've we've still got a long way to go. We've still got a battle to fight in terms of just proving to people that print print newspapers are viable, uh, sustainable in the future. Um, but I think you know, most most people who have read Unfield Dispatch, they do like it. Um, I've you know, we've had the majority of our feedback is positive. People people like it. I think I think the fact that Enfield Advertiser closed. Um, means that people in Enfield sort of understand the, the, the fragility of, of newspapers and they understand that it's having lost a newspaper and now gained a new one that they're, they're quite keen to, to keep Enfield Dispatch going. Um, so if, if you do value it, and I expect most people watching this will sort of, you know, be the kind of people who sort of value that, that local, local media and the role that local media has. Um, you could do one of two things. Obviously, you could you could become a member uh, with us. Um, you can go to enfielddispatch.co.uk slash join. Um, or if you're involved in an organisation, you could buy advertising with us. Um, we're trying to make it easier for small businesses to advertise. So we recognise that not everyone has a big budget, but we're um, we're just we're just about to launch a new thing for for the small businesses sort of advertising that's geared up for for, for people with a low budget. Um, where for ninety pounds you can just send us your logo and a bit of text, and we will we will design a sort of an advert for you. Um, uh, so that's a new thing. Um, but you know, you know, if if, uh, if if you're not able to give us money for whatever reason, that's fine. You can still support Enfield Dispatch. You can you can tweet about us. You can um, share our stories online on Facebook. Um, you can just, you know, have conversations and, you know, pick up a copy of the paper and maybe give it to your neighbour and, you know, just um, do, do whatever you can to sort of spread the word about Enfield Dispatch that we exist and, and that we're, we're, we're trying to do a good thing for Enfield. Okay, well, I mean, I think you're doing a good thing for Enfield and I think most people who read your newspaper think that too. And I also think there is a lot of future in the printed world. Technology is changing, it will challenge social networks. I mean, we're into the age of Alexa and voice recognition, that will change social networks and what we do as well. So we're all facing technological changes. And I think it's a working together and the working out how the future is going to be between us it's really important and I think you're contributing to that immensely so thank you for doing this and I hope in the future we'll edit we'll uh, interview you again to see how you're developing in a few months from now because I think it's uh, an incredibly interesting and courageous experiment so thank you for doing the interview James and uh, you know we'll talk again in the future thanks yeah thanks for your continued support it's um it's, it's really good to have the chance to be able to to talk about the paper and promote it so thanks a lot Okay, thanks James, and we'll end the uh, interview now. Thank you.